for kicking off. Wonderful. So to kick off our panel today, I'm going to ask our panelists to introduce themselves. Kicking off with you first, Jonathan, would you mind telling me a little bit about your background, your company, and your role? Yes, yeah, so I've been working for uh, seven years in HubSpot, uh, based in the Dublin office, which has been a pretty amazing journey that it was a significant bet for the company to try and set up a product team here. And over that time period, it's grown from 30 to 300 people. Um, my role has primarily been looking after their mobile apps on iOS and Android. And uh, today, I'm a director of product uh, for that area. Brilliant. Our Thank sure, thank you. Uh, Rakesh Rathod, so I'm the director of revenue for Builder.ai. Uh, I've been in software about 23 years. Last two years I've been at Builder to set their GTM and a different way of working. So I've come from the background of mainframes and iSeries servers. So it's a big change in terms of what's happened in the last couple of years. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Solid Road. In a previous life, I was an early sales hire in Intercom. Uh, I was then the head of sales EMEA for Chargeify. Uh, and most recently, then, I was the founder and CEO of a company called Grad Guide that was acquired last year. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, I spend my day-to-day -day work life working with startups on go-to-market strategy. So I'm very excited to speak to our three panelists today and learn something. So I'm going to kick off with you, Jonathan. So from a product perspective, could you tell me how AI has changed the product roadmap at HubSpot? It's been very dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, so working in the mobile space, I'm always looking for similarities. I think mobile might have been the last big significant wave. And I can remember at Facebook, no one was working on mobile until Zuckerberg came along and said, we're doing mobile. And the first instance of that, people started to like, add one slide to their presentation deck that says, here's what we're doing on mobile. Mm -hmm. He says, no, that's not what we're trying to do. And the next wave, they put that last slide first, and they went on to talk about what they wanted to do. And then he stopped having meetings with the product team until they started taking mobile seriously. That's how strongly he believed in that. And obviously, Facebook went on to be one of the powerhouses. And what's interesting is Mobile created a lot of widows in terms of these big giant companies that didn't exist because they didn't catch that wave early enough. And because there's a bit of a precedent, I think a lot of tech companies are now in that space. So uh, HubSpot's CEO, who doesn't ever dictate product, came out and said, we need to really consider AI ac across the board. So all roadmaps were like back to zero. And why is that significant and why is that interesting? Because it's not just pressure from one source. Uh, if you ever misfortunate enough to listen to earnings calls. Everyone's asking companies that have no relationship yet to AI, what's your AI strategy? And also there's a, a swell or pressure from, our, from users, which is a big difference to uh, other exciting new techs, whether it be 3.0 or bots. There wasn't that many users asking for this, so it's pressure from multiple fronts. And then the last thing is like, uh, anyone on the product team is a bit of a technologist themselves, so they're looking to play with different things, and they're asking it. So from a, technology front from an end user perspective and from a board level and investor perspective everyone's asking what are we going to do about ai so that uh, that makes you take notice that's a pretty strong signal yeah so it's it sounds like when you somebody clears your product roadmap and says ai has to be at number one is that what we're seeing i'll, I'll speak for my own team like yeah uh, basically the, we're having the team all hands uh, in dublin two weeks time and the message will be What's our, what's our roadmap for the next six months? It doesn't matter any of the other planning we've done because it, it won't be user-driven either. Normally in a roadmap, you're looking for signals from your users. But because this is such a new technology, your users aren't giving you the feedback on this. They might uh, identify what problems they have or where they could find more efficiencies. But it's going to be a different type of ideation, experimentation, uh, user-based validation. So it's... Uh, so none of us have done this before. Wow, that's super exciting. So, Rakesh, I'd love to hear from you in terms of thinking about that. What, are the, what kind of guidelines should we be thinking around at AI? What are the risks? What are the challenges here as we build technologies? Yeah, sure. So if I think about it from a builder.ai perspective, builder.ai has been using AI for the last seven years to help unlock the human potential to build any type of app or software without understanding coding. Um, and it needs guide rails, and it needs safety around that. Um, I remember not too long ago, an organization created an, uh, two AI bots, um, and they let it out into the wor big world wide web and tried to understand what it would do. Within 15 minutes, they started communicating in its own, own language, which no one could understand. 
So all, AI is powerful, and it's going to add a lot of efficiency and optimization to anything that we do relating to sales and marketing. But it needs firm guide rails all the way around it to make sure you get the positive side of it. Otherwise, letting it lose, as you saw just from last week's press, everyone's talking about it. It needs, uh, it needs some governance around it. Needs some governance. Okay, got it. Thank you. And Mark, you've built a business and you've come from the CRM world. Anybody here who understands CRM knows there's a huge amount of manual work that takes to update a CRM. So what kind of efficiencies are you seeing amongst your customers in, their, in using AI at the moment? Yeah, I think so. Like, obviously, a bit of background to us because everyone knows Builder AI and HubSpot. Yeah. So what Solid Road is essentially is an AI role-play-based training software for sales teams. So we allow sales reps to practice realistic sales calls with AI customers so they're not burning sales leads. Um, so we're kind of AI first. The company only was formed in February this year. Um, and I think really like where the AI is having a massive effect on, on sales in particular is removing the busy work from sales, like you said there, manually mm -hmm. updating CRMs and so on and so forth. So we're really seeing kind of efficiencies top of funnel. I'm kind of going back into a founder-led sales role myself. So yeah. between myself and my co-founder on the marketing front, trying to like build out content marketing and rather than having to write blog posts all day and, and build out video content, like it's as simple as using Copy AI, using Synthesia, using uh, 11 labs to build out kind of the, the content side of things, top of funnel. And then on the sales side, really I'm doing a lot of outbound prospecting. So I think like speed and personalization, AI has had a massive effect there. And um, so yeah, everything from like using like tools like Lavender to personalize email outreach to um, a new tool that I came across this week in particular is like Dome, which is like for presentations where I used to spend so much time building out slide decks and then proposals and just being able to do it in a matter of seconds. So I think like the removing the, the busy work is where I'm seeing a lot of the efficiencies and then talking to other sales leaders, they're kind of saying the same. They kind of sound the same. Brilliant, thank you. And good building on that, Jonathan, in terms of efficiencies at HubSpot. So your customers, they're all, see, they're all purchasing CRM. They want to see efficiencies. They want to see increased productivity amongst their sales team. So when you're considering your, your, your roadmap and how HubSpot are going to help get, drive those efficiencies, where do you see those coming from across sales and marketing? Full gamut. Uh, I think the real analysis will be like, what part of your job is a necessary evil? Like, what do you do is like, because it enables you to really do the part of the job that you're special at or that really brings value to you and your business? And I think that's the opportunity with Automation, and I see automation as a precursor to AI. Mm -hmm. Automation was rule-based. AI is rule-based that learns and can be far more effective and efficient. So if we think about in the HubSpot world, uh, well, I'll, I'll use mobile again as an example because that's the space I'm in. For me, the only difference between a desktop and a mobile device is that a desktop has, the only advantage there is to a desktop is it has a big screen and a physical keyboard. Uh, with AI now, the, the idea of a physical keyboard isn't as interesting because we're going to spend a lot less time writing long text. It's going to be much more short-based uh, sentences. And the big screen is good for doing like really detailed work, but like, uh, if anyone saw a Photoshop's demo for AI, it's no longer about using your mouse and selecting the magic wand and get rid of the background. You'll be putting in inputs like, I've taken a photograph, get rid of that background. So you can see how these like, kind of efficiencies are kicking in. What does that mean for sales and marketing CRM? For salespeople, we can see, for example, rather than using templates and snippets, it'll be like, actually, what's, what's uh, the auto-generated text that can be done here to send to this person? I think for a long period of time, we'll be in a review and trust cycle. I don't think this will ever be automated. That's too risky for now. We're very much like to uh, verify uh, what the output from AI is. Uh, and then you think of marketing, yeah, blog content, again, the first draft's gonna be written by AI. The, the magic 10% is what the, the creators will put on that there. And lastly, in the CRM space, there, you know, it's that whole age-old uh, sentence that you put junk in, you get junk out. And they, they talked about computers being working mm -hmm. that way. CRM is very much like that as well. It's, and it'd be very hard getting salespeople to put content into the CRM because it's not really for them, it's for the manager in the business. AI is going to be able to take a small amount of information and then give you information you didn't ask for, which would be helpful for how you sell. So it might be able to take, uh, for example, details from other sources about here's who you're competing with on this here bid, mm -hmm. or here's how frequently this person looks for additional uh, support on this here, or here's an event that this person, uh, anniversary that might be marked, which might have a nice personal touch. Like you want to feel like sales is personal. Uh, so I think all that's going to be a, a bit of a race. Until, last thing I'll say, until people realize that this is AI driven, 
It's like the first time an email knew your name. I was like, oh, look, Aldi know my name. How exciting. And then after a while, you realize, no, this is, this is no more personal than what it was before. So there'll be that kind of journey, I think, for AI. Really? So, so AI, your HubSpot's going to remind you for people's birthdays and anniversaries and coach you? and That's not 100% on the friend. roadmap yet. <laughs> okay. If anybody's got any ideas for Jonathan, he's here all day. Um, next up, thinking about Rupesh, you own the full revenue stack for, for Builder AI here across Europe. So that's across marketing and across sales, and you've got teams. What kind of, where are you seeing the trends, in, in, particularly in marketing, and what are your team using in marketing around AI, and how are they considering reaching out to customers more effectively on the marketing side? Yeah, sure. So with uh, AI in marketing, you know, we're trying to solve the, you know, the, the challenge that's always been around there, right? Yeah. How do you get the right message and the right material mm -hmm. to the right person at the right exactly. time? And it's always been a bit of a stab in the dark, right? It's, okay, someone's been on our website, like, great, what, what next? Um, so how we're trying to use is AI is kind of data-led decisions, is understanding the footprint someone's had, right? Someone's a speaker at an event, then they've engaged on your website, then they're looking at some materials. Okay, this person's looking to build an application of X and, X and Y type. So using kind of AI to its maximum strength in understanding a specific persona and personalizing, as Jonathan said, personalizing those, the marketing material and the messaging so you're, there's, there's natural, natural connect rather than just an, another email sent on an inbox. Um, that is, is of no relevance. Got it, got it. That makes a ton of sense. And lovely that Mark at Solid Road, for those of you who don't know what Solid Road does is, I'm where I spend a huge amount of time coaching sales teams and salespeople to be, to be more effective. So, Mark, is AI going to take our jobs? And maybe a little bit of what Solid Road does might help us frame that question. Yeah, I think that's like the running debate, really. I think if you take the... If you're of the the kind of train of thought that it is going to replace mm -hmm. our jobs. Like, it can either replace us or it can augment us. And if it's going to replace us, then all software comes commoditized and what mm -hmm. are we doing at a tech conference, really? So I think the, the augmentation piece is what really excites us and, like, making everyone better or, like, making their job more enjoyable. So I think, as I said, we're moving the kind of repetitive stuff out of your job and focusing on like the core companies that really matter, especially for sales reps. Like, so like I'm a big believer in people buy from other people, especially mm -hmm. people they like. And it's like most of the value of selling happens over the phone, person to person. So if you can actually spend more time on the phone, speaking to prospects, dealing with customers, solving problems, like that sounds like a lot more enjoyable job for me as a sales rep. And then I think then there will be like new roles created as well. So like, I don't know, I'd seeing everyone on LinkedIn, like, Prompt engineering, like that seems to be the, the job that, that everyone needs right now. What I'm sure that, that, sorry, I missed that. Prompt engineering, oh, right. not necessarily relevant to, to sales, but definitely relevant, relevant for us because we're trying to create these role play scenarios and we're really trying to fine tune those prompts to say like, what does a good pricing objection look like and how to overcome that or timelines, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, we're a strong believer that in the sales use case, what we think will happen is a lot of the manual mundane updating CRM, sending follow-up emails will be automated away, and the best reps then can focus their time and attention on upskilling, training, and becoming better sales reps, uh, and hopefully using Solid Road to do that. Brilliant, that sounds, that sounds exciting. So on to a final question. This question I'm gonna ask for all three of you, which is, I'd love you, to, what, what would you think are the biggest wins are gonna come out of AI for sales and marketing? Particularly if you think about this question, guys, in the context of people here that are building businesses. So think about the biggest AI opportunities across sales and marketing. Where do you see those? What are the biggest wins and why? <laughs> so where are, you, where are you placing your bets, Jonathan? I, I think this will be built know. off uh, the question of like, will AI take your jobs? And um, I watched the, the finale of Succession last night, and I was genuinely surprised that AI didn't become the new CEO. But I think that speaks to, like, uh, there's a Scott Galloway quote that AI won't take your job. People that know how to use AI will take your job. And it's been like that since, you know, the fear around computers coming along. Computers are going to take our jobs. No, people that know how to use a computer effectively will mm -hmm. take your job. Big fear around the internet. Will the internet take my job? It, it didn't, it was people that understood how to use it, and it's gonna be the same in sales and marketing. I suspect the biggest, uh, people are still pretty good at selling, but it's reliant on the quality of leads they get. I think the biggest opportunity will be the precision that uh, 
people can be targeted for marketing efforts. And it, okay. the best type of marketing is doesn't feel like a nuisance. You're almost mm -hmm. glad someone reached out to you, or you're like, oh, this is something I was looking for. And uh, Google Ads used to kind of be like that once upon yeah. a time. And that's probably going to be the sweet spot for AI and marketing. If they get that right, then the quality of leads that go to the sales reps will be much higher quality, much higher close rate, mm -hmm. and the whole business will be much more effective. And I think that's, that's the potential. It just depends of uh, how close we get to spamming with AI or making it just, if you, if you use solely AI and there's no human element, if it's all artificial, people will realize that and it'll disappear too. So it's uh, a combination of the tech and the people using it is going to be uh, the real winners. Got it. Okay. So are we seeing that if our emails then that we're going to get from tech companies are going to be super customized at the right time, personalized to what we need, are we going to get less inbound email? Are people going to send less emails because spam will go because everything's going to be customized? Those who do it right will be more precise and will require less emails. Okay. It's like, you know, think about the, you know, what, what did we have before targeted emails? And to say targeted, you signed up to it once and mm -hmm. suddenly they think uh, you want to hear every week about the latest offers from Hooverland. The, <laughs> before that there we had meal drops and it was yeah. just junk coming through your door and that's, that hasn't changed. That's still what we have today and it is it's tiresome and you almost mm -hmm. like block it out. You no longer see it. It's the same with ads on the internet. We've got so used to like filtering them out. Uh, that's why I think there's been a challenge to email marketing and AI might be, might be what gives email marketing an extra 10 years of life more than what it would have got without it. Brilliant, thank you. Lovely. And just before Kresh, Kresh goes on to his, uh, where he's placing his bets, we are taking questions if you want to put those into the app and DC will bring them up when they're uh, up, uh, uh, up to us before the end. Lovely. Rakesh, where are you placing your bets? Where are the biggest opportunities for AI the, sales and marketing? The biggest wins are going to be around efficiency and being able to do more. Yeah. What we found of by using it for a number of years is, um, you know, think about the mundane tasks that you have to do in a sales process yeah. outside of selling. It's all the systems you've got to fill in. It's, it's yeah. keeping track of your opportunities and updates and things like that. So getting rid of those mundane tasks are going to be important. But I think what we found is by using AI technology for our customers to build software, we're able to do more. So we are now got much larger throughput. So we were talking about earlier about um, removing jobs. Yeah. We've actually done the opposite. We've actually freed up time to actually take on more people because oh, we've wow. actually got big, bigger bandwidth to do more. Um, okay. And as the future of AI evolves and gets better, there's going to be more opportunities as they go along. Oh, wow. OK, so could you just put some, put some numbers on that for everyone in terms of how many staff has AI enabled you then to grow your team by? So if I look back at Builder.ai probably about 18, 19 months ago, we had 120 people globally, yeah. over three offices. Uh, today we have six offices and 650 people. Wow. So basically we're using everyone to the full potential to go and expand our business and, and achieve what we need to achieve. And we have a goal of 777, which is 77 proposals every hour for the, within the next seven years. And that's going to only happen by optimizing and being efficient in terms of what we do. Brilliant. Thank you, Rakesh. Where are you placing your bets? Oh, well, you've already placed your bets, Mark. I think so we place our bets a bit, <laughs> but I think like in the immediate, I think that there is a race towards this like virtual assistant. So like you're seeing in web apps now that like create this content for me or create this uh, pitch deck and having that kind of command function to have that personal assistant to like help in the efficiency side. I think that the next stage and what we're betting and I think like you're having your own personal assistant and then you could actually have your own personal coach, your own personal AI coach. Yeah. I think that's what really excites me. Like we're not too far away from a world where you're sitting down to build out a sales strategy. You put on your Apple headset or your, and you actually have Mark Benioff in the room who's doing it with you. I think like, that's how far I can go. I think from like startup land and, and like where I have my interest, I think what's really exciting about the possibilities with AI is the ability for, to build big companies unlike how they were built before. Like, you no longer need to raise hundreds of millions of dollars and build a team with 500 people or you know, 100 engineers. Like, I think that small companies with like, only a small bit of funding behind them and like, really leveraging AI can build some really cool stuff and build some massive businesses as well. I love that. Thank you. And hold on to the mic, because the first question is for you, because you mentioned some tools that you're using as you're building your business. So in terms of, let's say, particularly tools for personalizing emails at scale, and writing ad copy. Thank you, Darren, for the, for the question. What, what tools would you recommend? Because there's lots of people here who are building their, their stack that's going to drive their business. What tools are you using? What tools have worked? Yeah, I think for like my 
like sales and marketing stack at the moment. I use Apollo.io for like getting email addresses. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm using Instantly for like automated uh, email cadences, which is really good as well. I'm using them for like more personal touches using that Lavender app, which I said, which is just like a Chrome extension in Gmail. I can really like hyper personalize uh, emails. Um, and then I'm using HubSpot for the first time as a CRM, which is I've always used Salesforce before. And like Patrick will tell you, my co founder, how much I much prefer using HubSpot. Uh, and I'm actually using that like new like plug in that Darmesh built, the chat spot, where I'm literally just telling it to like create new deals for me and update pipeline stages. So uh, that's been a great help as well. And yeah, that's kind of the, I said Dome as well with Tome, sorry for presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, so rather than using Google Slides now, I'm just giving it a quick prompt saying, I need this commercial deck built for this customer and uh, creates it straight away. Wow, that's some really great tips. Anything else to, any other tools that you would like to add from that list, Rakesh or Jonathan? I think the HubSpot guys have got us because we, are, we just recently bought some HubSpot as well. So, But uh, yeah, HubSpot, Lusher, there's Sales yeah. Loft, there's some of these tools that help you automate some of those cadences around uh, and marketing and sales. Got it. Lovely. Okay. So actually, Rakesh, I'll keep this one to kick off with you. What about AI and business development? How do you see its contribution? I think uh, AI and business development will come in the form of training. You know, um, I often get to some of my guys come up and say, look, I'm mm -hmm. coming across this barrier, what should I do? Um, you know, this is something that a, a AI bot or an AI tool could actually answer saying, you know, have you tried this or have you tried mm -hmm. that? Give me some more, give me some more um, background into what challenges you're facing and how to kind mm -hmm. of overcome them. So I think they can be used in, in the whole training element as well. Got it, okay, okay, wonderful. The um, potential of AI in business development is very, it's potentially more exciting for startups and scale-ups than it is for big enterprise businesses. And what I mean it, is that um, whenever you're in startup world, you're grasping for AI and looking for a comparison point. So I'll mm -hmm. give an example. I previously worked in a startup, did a MailChimp, don't tell HubSpot, email campaign, and I had like an open rate of say 15%. And I was kind of like, is that good? I, I don't know if it's good. I only measure myself relative to myself. Mm -hmm. With the potential of AI and the data sources, it could get very sophisticated. It's not just a blunt, this is what a good open rate is. Uh, the startup I worked for was um, desktop virtualization. So I imagine 15% was a very high open rate for it, uh, which might be different to like one direction tickets. Uh, is one direction the band anymore, actually, my show, <laughs> uh, which might be like 95%. So it's like trying to contextualize it in your industry and then maybe contextualize it in which part of the world are you in. So getting very sophisticated of like, here's kind of how your competitors are performing. Mm -hmm. And then from that there, you have a real target for your business of like, I want this much engagement for my marketing campaigns or this much uh, a hit rate in terms of my sales outreach or even like an expectation of like this much service tickets per item sold. So it gives you much more barometers that really give you the pulse and health of your business whenever you don't have that top metric, which used to be just profit. Mm -hmm. It gives you early signs of health before you have to uh, worry about running out, of, running out of money as it is in those days. Got it, got it. I have an interesting question here because this is a session on sales and marketing tooling, but sales and marketing tooling doesn't live in a silo. It needs to integrate with other systems around the business, including accounting and customer support, etc. How do you see the AI that we were building into our sales and marketing systems overlap or integrate with or is assisted into to benefit other systems as well. So will we be able to reconcile our end of month reports from a finance perspective faster because of AI in our CRM systems? Any, any thoughts on that in terms of as AI, will the AI and the finance function talk to the AI and the sales function? What are we seeing? Yeah, th th this is where I'm, slight, I'm biased and tainted by living in HubSpot for seven years. <laughs> the, bet, the bet HubSpot made was that there's excellent uh, vertical point solutions that do things very, very well, mm -hmm. but you lose quite a lot of your customer context mm -hmm. through that kind of like evidential gap, the pass over from I've got leads, passing it over to sales, do you lose a little bit of context, passing it over to service, because service is almost like your next round of marketing. It's like, think of that, I'm sure everyone in this room has talked to a friend about how great Apple's service was or Amazon's service was. Now that just creates a sense of like, that's marketing essentially. So that's why HubSpot sees service and marketing is like almost circular. If we're to bring AI into that, 
that can be quite easily done in a platform world. If it's all lots of point solutions, there's going to be a challenge of how you join the AI up, AI up and give it permissions to right. jump from one element to another. And that's before you even think about some of the backroom functionality like yeah. finances or your own staff or whatever else. So it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, the term open AI, I, don't, I think it's an oxymoron. I don't, I don't think it's going to be very open for long. Okay. Uh, so that'll be very interesting to see where it all lands in terms of how easy it is to join these dots up. Brilliant. I'd like to just finish up with Rakesh and Mark on that. So how in Builder AI is are the, the AI in other solutions impacting sales and marketing? Yeah, I think the, I mean, we've made a, a start at it, but I think the future is of AI will be, or across functional departments, mm -hmm. will be there'll be no hiding. You know, there'll be a clear sight of sales versus collections, versus forecasting, versus budgeting, all, all of the above. So it will become you know, much leaner and there'll be no way to hide. You know, it'll be, be clear cut in terms of data-led decisions rather than what we think is really happening in the business. Brilliant, interesting. And Mark, last word to you. Yeah, no, it's an interesting one. And to be honest, I actually haven't given it that much thought. We're still very kind of zero to one and mm -hmm. um, using only kind of a finite amount of tools. I think that it's almost like the extension of the integration layer and how integrations have always been like a moat in themselves and um, having your kind of tools speak to other tools. And I think AI where it can come in there is almost like an extension to Zapier or what we're used to, that it's not just connecting these tools together, but it's actually the follow-up task that the human then is connecting them for that very reason. I think that could be very interesting as well. Brilliant. Thank you for the great questions, guys. And I hope you enjoyed the, the panel.